Democrat Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal recently went on Joy Reid's show on MSNBC to remind the American people of the extreme levels of evil their platform has become. Now, I'm probably pronouncing her name incorrectly, and I normally would do my best to look it up and at least try to correct it, but no. She deserves none of our respect, let alone votes, so next election cycle, hopefully everybody in Seattle, Washington, remembers this clip of when she laughed at the idea of American kids being horrendously attacked because it's inconvenient for Biden. This is one of the reasons that people have these uh, sort of thinking, this sort of thinking. Uh, here's the three the cable networks reporting of this was our, our banner said uh, soon Biden announces uh, legal protections for undocumented spouses of your citizens. CNN's banner said Biden announces new protections for some undocumented spouses. Here was Fox's banner. Migrant arrested for raping 13 year old. New York City. <laughs> yes. And so I think that's part of the problem. And in case you missed it, here's MSNBC ignoring the issues to write fluff pieces for Biden, CNN basically proving that they're state-sponsored media by doing the same, and what she was actually laughing at is the horrific attack on an American girl, a kid that they conveniently hidden from their headlines. As the attack occurred in Queens, New York, where there was a $10,000 reward for finding this evil individual that happened to be one of Biden's newcomers, as all they had was this short clip of him riding his bicycle. But then this local hero dished out some vigilanteism. Take him out, and I told everybody, yo, this is the fish, you know. I punched him, I kicked him a little bit. He didn't deny it, he didn't. He didn't deny, he was like, he was like, oh, he started yelling, help, help, help in Spanish. I'm like, yeah, that's what the little girls were saying. Mm -hmm. And, and he didn't deny it. I said, they already got you. He's like, yeah, I know, I know. And he just surrendered, he gave up. It's not even a, that I'm big, it's just, you feel me? I, I got two little sisters. And I'm about to have a daughter, so it's like, for me, it, it did not serve any. Either way, if I was, didn't have two little sisters, I was about to have a daughter. It's still not right. It's still not right. As they apparently stuffed him under a car while they waited for police. And as the NYPD took him into custody, the New York Post reported that he actually recorded himself committing the atrocity. And here's the thing that the Democrats and their predominantly well-off college-educated base don't seem to understand, is they think somebody like me, an immigrant, or like that black man in New York, will for some reason take the side of another person of color over the side of the innocent victim that very well could have been our kid, our sister, or even our neighbor. So when Trump says something about stopping Biden's newcomers coming Coming in before they're properly vetted, the Democrats assume that we would be offended, as just because they can't tell us apart, or even worse, they're willing to sacrifice American lives for their political agenda, they think we're ghoulish enough to do so as well, because they try to label it as fear-mongering, but that would suggest that these incidents are either being exaggerated or flat-out untrue. Not the reoccurring theme across the country, as yet another incident, even worse than New York's, just occurred to another kid. On top of the other Americans that tragically are no longer with us, in very preventable murders. As the most recent newcomer was apparently deported at least three times before coming back again to commit this crime. And it's not just impacting Americans, but also the countless kids coming over the border that nobody seems to know where they went. So no AOC tears in front of empty fences, no presidential trips to grieving families, and no wall-to-wall -wall news coverage of this alarming uptick of crimes against women. It's silence. Because tragically, they would rather see innocent lives suffer than to give Trump even the slightest resemblance of a win. Just look at this poll asking voters if they would approve Trump's proposal to eliminate taxes on tips. Democrats are 40 points in favor of this policy, unless they know it's Trump's initiative, then they are 10 points against it. And even though this is a much less impactful policy on the American people, it's a clear example of how they would rather let Americans suffer than let Trump win. And let that sink in. The Trump derangement syndrome has become so insanely out of control, Democrats will go on national television and laugh at the idea of a kid in Queens having her entire life ruined as a result of Biden's poorest border policies. All because they don't want to admit the Democrat agenda has failed the American people. As Biden's press secretary thinks his policies are actually working. If you think about the announcement that he made today, it's about protecting American citizens, American families. His Homeland Security Secretary thinks this benefits Americans. We stand by it, not only in terms of its legality, but in terms of its significant public benefit for America. And after Biden's so-called securing of the border, Bill Malugin from Fox shows us the border in California is still wide open to anybody. As even in broad daylight, he encounters countless amounts of Chinese nationals waltzing into the country. And here's the thing. 
I'm willing to bet a large percentage of those people fleeing their homes are coming to the country to pursue the American dream. But we already know a certain number of them are people we would never allow in if we could properly identify and vet them. So sadly, given the choice between protecting the unknown military age male crossing into the country or the little girl in Queens, I'm choosing the innocent American every time. For all we know, the guy coming into the country could be innocent too, don't care, I'm choosing the American every time. And most Americans that actually live in reality will also choose the American every time. Because we still can help asylum seekers, immigrants, and a lot of people that just want to pursue the American dream. But there has to be proper protocols in place that protects not only the citizens currently in the country, but also newcomers trying to seek asylum from the criminal activity that they don't want following them in or exploiting them as they get here. And not only that, but making sure there's something for them when they arrive. Because a lot of these people pay the cartels thousands of dollars and are promised jobs, housing, and a future here. And as Savannah Hernandez shows us in Boston, they end up sleeping in airports. And if they're lucky, get shoved in overcrowded suburban hotels that cost the taxpayers an unsustainable $9 million a year. And when there's no more fancy hotel rooms, they actually get housed in a prison. And there's countless stories just like this in New York City, Chicago, and all across the country of newcomers sleeping outside in the snow or overcrowded facilities incredibly upset that what they were told on TikTok was an outright lie and there's absolutely no light at the end of the tunnel, just more to spare as government programs run out of money and Biden invites millions more with seemingly no end in sight. And what's our president doing in response to all this? running off out of the public's view to get prepared for his debate next week, where his press secretary says basically nothing will happen while he's gone. Do you intend to brief during the time that he is away? We don't typically uh, do traditional uh, press briefings when the president is away, so uh, we do not have uh, uh, a scheduled uh, 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 formal briefing uh, to speak of. As his debate prep is incredibly challenging. Of that debate prep, it's going to be actually putting that into action with these mock debates. This is going to include a 90-minute formal debate where the president is standing up on his feet the entire time trying to mirror what he's going to have to do in real time next week. And imagine being on his team right now, knowing that if he wins, he's facing a collapsing economy, crisis at the border, World War III, and countless other issues Biden will probably cause directly himself. And their primary concern is, we need a week to make sure he can stay standing for longer than an hour. I mean the jokes write themselves, but with everything going on with this topic, even I don't want to do lighthearted commentary. So if you appreciate hearing about everything they're trying to hide, hopefully you'll subscribe, and maybe next time we'll cover something funner.